probably earlier today, he said he had interviewed for a new job yesterday, and they offered it to him. That explained it! It must have not come to his internet after all! Go down in a layer. It looks beautiful to me. You know what? Someone's destroying this rifle. My job's to find out who. Snail, I'm coming for you. And I don't remember much about the stroke, I'm sorry. I told I'm trying not to cry, but I can't help it. So now the repercussions are, my left leg doesn't work, so I can't walk, and my left arm doesn't work, and my left eye doesn't work either. But I am lucky I'm still alive. The doctor said I should be dead, oh my god. So I'm a lucky man. But the truth is I'd rather be dead than go through this anymore. In my, in my heart, I'm telling you, in my heart, I feel this is where I'm going to die in this bed. Mm -hmm. I think I'll die in this bed in the next six months because I have no life anymore. I spoke to my mum. My mum has reminded me I can see mental picture, but that's all I can do. I, I miss seeing my mum. I, I want to see my mum hanging my mum cuddle. On 21st of November last year, I had a stroke. Okay. I hope my legs stay still this time. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. Now I've got socks on the floor. The floor is very slippery. Right, right, sit down. Can you take the sock off for me? Thank oh God. There's got to be a bit of life to this. There has to be somewhere. For Christ's sake. I need to get back to Australia urgently. Mark, please help me get back home. Or somebody help me get back on the plane. You just have to sit next to me on the airplane. You don't have to carry me or anything. Oh, oh, my arm here. Let me sit back. Sit down, we're caught up again. Mac, Mac that's my, my dear friend of 20 plus years. He's broken my heart. He's in Melbourne somewhere. He said he was going to come here on the 19th, which was what, yesterday, I think, wasn't it? He, he actually called my mother in Australia and he said, he said, Colin, tell your son I'll be there on the 19th and I will pick him up for you. And he has not, he has not been here. And on my phone, I've, I've sent him 70, 30 messages and he has not answered me at all. Please take me now, God, get it over and done with, please. My heart said, you want me to die. That's how I feel now. Please don't let that happen. If I die, it's on you now, my, my friend. I'm not, I'm not ashamed, of, I'm not, not embarrassed to tell you. It's so much pain sometimes, I, I lay that here and I cry myself to sleep. It's bloody painful, my God. Because the truth is I feel in my heart that my family don't care. And I feel like the doctors here don't care. Mark, if you, if you watch this, fuck you, buddy. I've never known pain like this in my life. I really want to go outside. I want to smell the bad air. I want to see the motorbikes in the street. I want to see people walking and smiling. All I do is live in this room. And I fucking hate it. I hate it now. Never, ever. They broke up. I'm sorry, all you Facebook fans. <laughs> I love him very much. He's a good man.
I don't think she can recognize my voice anymore or recognize me. Before I had my stroke, she loved me. And if, 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 if I call her, she'd come to me straight away. But now I call her and she just looks at me as if to say, who are you? I don't, I'm not coming near you. Because my voice has changed since the stroke, I know that. Maybe my looks have changed too, I don't know. Okay, so Kai. Yes. Uh, tell me about when you first became aware of your situation. Of what situation? Of the stroke? Yeah. It was when I woke up in hospital. And I said to Ang, well, what happened? And he said, you, you, he says that words, well, you got a stroke. <laughs> you, you got a stroke. <laughs> that were his exact words. I was sitting there getting ready for work, checking my school bag. I remember falling forward. And that's when you I was on the ground, so my head smashed onto the ground, onto the tiles. That's how I fractured my skull. And then Anne came in from the kitchen and saw me and helped me up. And then I think, Anne, you called the ambulance, didn't you, or the doctors? When I had a stroke, you called the ambulance? No, I called for the um, school. How did, I, how did I get to hospital? I bring you to hospital. And he took me to the hospital. Yeah, I call, I call a taxi and they take you to the hospital. Okay. We take you to the hospital. Okay. What do you think caused the stroke? Cigarettes. Uh, see, I've been smoking since the age of 13. That's 40 years smoking until I had the stroke. <coughs> Excuse me. So please, guys, all my students, put your damn cigarettes out now. If I see you smoking, I will get it, I'll shove it up your nose, I promise you. And I will do it, I swear to God. When I come back and I'm walking, I'll get the cigarette and I'll put it up your nose, whether it's whether it's a light or not, I will do it. So put your dim cigarette out now. This is our preparation to move, I'm sorry guys. Mm. Now, for you for me to get the pumps, you've got to take this bag. No. No, keep selling. I just told you about the pumps. For, for me to keep it, you've got to take this bag, please. Otherwise there'll be no promise. Okay. Why um, not that? Coke zero and Coke light. Oh my God! What? I need to do interview. Okay, sorry, Coke. I'm so sorry. I forgot for a moment. So, um, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay now. I heard some <coughs> strange sound from downstairs, so I come down and I saw him fall out on stairs and can't sit up or stand up. I know something happened and I <coughs> see his face is not like no more and his body, he, uh, uh, have, his body can't move anymore. So I, I think he, he, he got stuck. How did you feel when you saw him on the floor? The, uh, it is the, the first thing is so scared because I never mm, it never happened to me before, so I don't know what to do. It's so nervous, so just do everything like like by nature where it calls some people for help. It's so it's really scary. Do you feel like you lost your life? Yeah, really. <laughs> Because this guy, I have my life to this guy, seriously. And even until today, there's nothing he doesn't do, he won't do for me. He's an amazing young man. <laughs> He's an amazing man. All the Vietnamese people should be proud of this boy, I'm serious. Here's a credit to the race of, race of people called Vietnamese, my God. And you are, because he is a hero to me. To be really stupid about it. There was a song, you know, Wind Beneath My Wings. There's the Wind Beneath My Wings. Here it is. You're not eating now. That's true, you are your big hero to me. I can't be a very big hero.
typical day, I wake up about 9 or 10 a.m. And the first thing that happens is Mr. Aunt takes my wee-wee bag off and puts a new one on. Then I have a shower, he showers me, helps me go to the toilet, whatever. But this is what I want to do sometimes. Smack and I but I can't reach him. I just can't reach him, damn it. <laughs> then he changes my clothes for me. Then, then he'll lay down and talk and I'll lay down and talk or we'll watch TV. Then we, then about six o'clock we'll have dinner and we'll go through the whole process again. Did you realise when he had a stroke that um, life would be like this as it is today? I, I never think about it, uh, it, it will like this. I think he, he will have uh, his, uh, his uh, like a kin will come to, this, uh, come to Vietnam to, to take uh, him back to Australia soon. So I, I think when he uh, get out of the hospital, he go back to home. But now he uh, the person who who, who give uh, the power attorney. Now he, he disappear. He I think he don't want to help anymore. So now we have to stay at home to wait. And I don't know why the Ho Chi Minh consulate, the embassy, or his family don't want to help him or his friend. Oh, no one want to help. Have you spoken to your sister? Yeah, I spoke to her yesterday. Why can't she take you home? She's just come back from holidays with her husband. And besides that, she's got, I think it's five or six grandchildren she's got to look after as well. Plus her own family, her own daughter and her own son. Plus she works. Plus she's a housewife. My sister works very hard, I know. I just want to kill myself here to love and double. Honestly, I do. I mean, it's not a sympathy trick. It's, it's, a, it's a fact. I really do. And I think I'm going to do it very soon. Very, very soon. I already know the date I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm so scared, guys, that I'm going to die like this in Vietnam and I don't want... I'd rather come home. I know, Mama, Mommy, I know you can't help me, but Gloria, Peter or Kathleen or Anthony can help me, surely. Why can't his mum just get him? Because he just get out of operation. She get a lung cancer. The doctor says she, should, uh, she, she, she can't go. What about his sister? <laughs> I don't know why. I think he don't have a good reason to be his sister. She really don't want to help. She's a, a, a strong person. She have his, uh, she have her, her husband, her, her children. They, they are strong too. And they can come here to, to pick him back to Australia, but I don't want, they don't want to do it. Can you take him back to Australia? I, I, I would like to do it, but I have to get a visa. But to get a visa to Australia is very hard because they said I need uh, four thousand US for four thousand US dollar in the bank account. I ha I need a job. Kai tossed the camera a lot, begging people to just take him home. So, with your phone now, why don't we just make a quick video, just post it online. Not with my camera, your phone. Just talk to the camera. Just talk. Because it's hard with one hand and one eye to do it by myself. Well, you have a... We can, you can't do it, but someone can hold a camera phone for you. And can hold a camera phone for you. You so just talk. Anything? Instead of waiting for me to spend a month editing this, just post the video. And... Do it with your phone, it's better. Hey? Yeah. Eh? That's what I So I'm just going to try and get comfortable here for a sec, sorry. That's better. This leg, hang on the other leg. Right, look at the phone. Ah. Hello everybody, it's Kai. How are you? First off, I'd like to thank all of you for donating to help me have the surgery and everything for my head. And as you can see, I'm at home now in bed, but I have one big problem, everybody. I have to get home to Australia to get better medical care and rehabilitation, and I can't go there because the consulate, the Australian consulate says somebody has to go with me on the plane. 
So I'm begging all of you guys out there, is there somebody out available that can get a visa to go to Australia, that can sit with me on the aeroplane, and I will pay for your airfare. Please, get, there's got to be someone out there that can help me. I beg you. You don't have to do anything except sit next to me on the plane and talk to me. You don't have to carry me or anything like that. If we have a stopover in the aeroplane, maybe push me around in the wheelchair a little bit, that's all. No, nothing heavy, nothing, nothing strenuous. Just somebody say yes, please. Because my sister needs his life back as well. He has given 24 hours a day, seven days a week of his life to me. And he's almost dead, he's exhausted. Somebody, I beg you, help me. I miss, I miss my kids, I miss my job. I miss my colleagues, I really do. I even miss my desk at school. Please somebody help me, I beg you. I want, I want Mr. Ad to have his life back, I really do. So somebody please help me go back to Australia. That's not gonna cost you a single cent. I'm paying for it, not you. The only thing I ask you is for your time on the airplane, which is about a 10 hour flight. I will buy you a beer or two on board as well. When we get on the plane, I'll buy you a beer to have a drink with me, I swear to God. And Mark, my, my good friend for 20 plus years, and let me just emphasize, he's not just my friend, he's a family friend of 20 plus years. And he has, he has helped me a lot in the past, that's the truth, as I have helped him in the past. And it breaks my heart that I know he's in hospital somewhere and I don't know where. But Mark, if you're watching this, please, I beg you, just, just one telephone call and explain to me why you can't get in and all is forgiven. I'm not, I'm not mad at you, I promise. I'm certainly not mad at you. I'm just angry that, and stressed that I, I can't get out of this bed and get to the airport. Believe me from my heart, I'm not mad at you, honestly. You are my best friend, you always will be, I swear. I just want to know why, that's all. I just want to know why you can't help me, or why you won't help me. So when you all say this, put your hands together. If you know somebody that can help me, contact me, please. Say thank you, goodbye. Guys, I have to go now. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm sorry if I've wasted your time. Please. Think about what I've said, seriously. I, I desperately need help. I'm begging somebody, I desperately need your help, seriously. Okay, just cut. Cool. Okay, my friends, one more thing. Turn up already. Okay, I'm right. sorry, okay. Okay, so... Was that okay? Yes, uh, so now just post it. Thank you, Dan, thank you. Just post it. Uh, you know when you post something, a photograph or a video that says say something about this, okay. what should we say? A plea for Mr. Kai, a PLE for Mr. Kai. To say whatever you want. Okay. I think, a, I think a, a personal plea for Mr. Kai. Right. That, that will reach people that they'll, they'll watch it, okay? Okay, so now we're here. You said you wouldn't get mad at me to this bag, please? Bag is still in already. It's no, a new bag. Is it? I thought you took it, sorry. I want you to take it and put a new bag there. You haven't taken the bag, have you? No. It's a new bag. Okay, so you took the old bag, that's what I'm asking you. Yes? I said it's new bag, mean I took it. See, I'm sorry guys, this is confusion and it's all, it's all my fault because I, sometimes I don't understand what he's saying. I get so damn frustrated and angry at myself because I upset him. So, okay. uh, what, what did you write in the, on the phone? Say, I said, hello everyone, I need someone who, who has visa can fly with me back to Australia. I will pay for your FA. I can't fly by myself. I need help. Please help me. Do you think this is going to work, Anne? I don't know. If you're smoking now, stop smoking. Or if you, if you if you if you want to smoke, don't. This is what happens from years of smoking. Forty years of smoking, and it's not worth it. Trust me. Why have you tied his foot? Uh, because now it's late. Not ready for long, so. The heat uh, articulation it be it being very hard. I've so now I have since I've had rehab for six months or five months. Yeah. So now I have to make it straight on time. If if not make it straight, it will go up. Okay. I never can straight it for be, like like. It'll be worse than my arm. Yeah. Think you done? Yeah. Did you shake it? Yeah. I said done. Never fight. Speak to me, I've got chocolate lips. Recording. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Hurt, hurt, stop. <laughs> I got some of that, that they are already in my mouth, the fumes, so I'm going to need some water in a minute. <laughs> Otherwise, I might end up all, all dry.
Well, there's no two ways about it. This is very exciting since yesterday. I agree. Yeah. Um, so Mark got back in contact with you. Yeah, he found me the phone. Uh, what, what was his reasons for his absence? Well, I'll tell you what happened. My brother-in-law sent the police to Mark's, Mark's, Mark's place. Mark's neighbour saw the police banging on the door. The neighbour came out and said, he's in hospital at Necro Hospital. So the police got the details of the hospital and Mark's full details. Went to the hospital, got Mark out of the hospital and brought him home. And then said, you better call fucking Kai. And that's why he called me this morning. So Mark still wants to help you? Absolutely. He, he actually begged me for forgiveness. So yeah. And then I told him about the video, he watched the video, and then he cried. Because he saw my arm. The second time when he got me back, he was crying his eyes out. And I said, what's wrong with you? And he goes, I just saw the video. And he said, it's very distressing. And I said, yes, I know it is. I tried to fucking tell you that. I'm sorry, now I'm crying again. So this this girl who came in yesterday, who well, is she? Just she met his teacher. She knows people that see me out. That's why she came. When she saw me, <laughs> what was she like? Very nice person. But I'm just amazed at two things: a, we don't need to buy her a ticket, and b, uh, we don't have to get her a visa. And c, she's happy to do this for me. Why do you think she wants to help you? She doesn't even know who you are. I think the underlying reason is because I'm a teacher at the same You see, on the video, I said, I want to go back to my classroom. And I think I touched a nerve with her. Because she said she loves her students too. So there. Before you book flights, you have other things to do. You need to get documents. Definitely. So what are these documents that you need to get? Permission to fly from the hospital with my doctor. Without that, I can't get on the aeroplane at all. Every country has that law, it's not just Vietnam. So how important is it you get those documents? 100% important. Stop it, how on the camera now? <laughs> he's not filming. He's doing. No, he's not filming, I asked him. <laughs> Stay well timed. You know that cut it. Hmm. Maybe I should do some sort of Start fart montage. Start over. I need some room to push it down. Sorry, man? Maybe I should do some sort of fart montage in a documentary. Oh, oh, oh. Good idea. I've got, I've, I've, no good, I've got to sit up like this. Hold for a sec. Let me try and sit up like this. So, maybe my back and my head, you can't complain. Keep standing in there. I'm going to get some. He's heavy. Oh. <laughs> it's your fault for giving me that big blanket today. Be quiet, Kai. I'm oh, sorry, that's sorry. My foot's on the carpet. Be careful. Be careful. Give me my back. Let go. What you should do, get the camera and look all the way upstairs through the middle and see how high it was. Then you can show people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will. I'm exhausted and I didn't do much. Oh my god. My back's hurting and my legs hurting. Yeah, lazy git. Both know you can walk, you just can't be bothered. Oh shit, I wish I could walk everybody, I really do. Because I'd be running, I'd be jumping for joy going home. Put it out. I can't fucking see anything, alright? Listen to me. See what I mean? Look, it would have been easier with a sock though, that's hurting me a lot. Why doesn't anybody fucking listen to me anymore? Jesus Christ. Look at this. I'm, I'm Asia's next top model. You outside, Kai? Yeah, I'm outside here for the first time since last November. 21st of November last year. I'm actually touching the ground, I can't believe it. Thank you. He's a good man, this one. Even though we yell, at, we yell at each other, he's a good man. He yells at me because I know he loves me, that's all, so it's okay. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, he's a very good man. And I'm going to miss him so much, everybody. Sally. I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah. It's not good. You know what I was going to do. Hmm? Quick! Yeah, yeah.
Come sir. Hello. Okay. Come in. This tool with the dog. How are you? He used to take me a lot. That's why I'm emotional because he's a really nice man. I just wanted to say goodbye. Because he hasn't seen me since I had my stroke. About two weeks before my stroke was last time I saw him. And that's why I cried. I'm sorry for crying. And Okay, let's try to be positive. You're in a taxi on the way to the hospital. Yes, to get this paperwork your, done. It's your ticket to the airport. Then they don't issue me a ticket. They've got to sign on the Vietnam, Vietnam Airlines form to say that I'm okay to get on the plane. If they don't do it, I'm staying here. I can't go anywhere. Which means I'll be living in this wheelchair, literally. Because I've run out of money, I won't have anywhere to live. So I've been living in the back alley, sitting in a wheelchair 24 hours a day in, in the rainy season. Okay, that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen. Beg, begging for food. It's going to happen because I, okay. if, if I can't get on the plane. No, listen to me. That would not happen because you live with me. Do you have an elevator in your place? Uh, I would kick out one of my tenants and say, look, my friend's coming in. They would understand. Man, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'd look after you, mate. Thank you. Because you're being silly, calm down. Okay. There's been a moment that you wanted to walk away. Walk away from Kai? Yes. Did you leave him? Of uh, course, no. I have to take care of him.
Um, when Kai goes home, will you miss him? Of course. What will you miss about Kai? And for everything he did to me in the past, of course, this time I take him, sometimes I'm angry with him. But I'm straight and tired, but I still love him a lot. But we have been together about three years. It's not in a short time, so a lot of memories, good memories. But I, I can't forget him straight away. Uh, what is your name? My me. name is me. And no, you're, you're me. I'm me, you're you. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you find out about Chad? I just saw his video on Facebook and then I get in contact with him. Did you see the video? Yes, and uh, why, why did I you cried want to so much. <laughs> I'm sorry for because, crying. I can't yes, help it. Because I just imagine I, if I were in his situation, then yeah, I would need you. someone to help me that way. So Actually. Do you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be sitting here right now tonight, seriously. Mm -hmm. Oh, if it wasn't for you, I would not be sitting here going home. I'd be home in bed now, wondering what am I going to do. It's true, it's true, it's so true. I'd be saying, how, I, how in the hell are we going to get back to Australia? But because of you, I'm sitting here right at the airport right now. Yeah, I can't believe it. 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 Yeah, Dang. Your sister's meeting you at the airport, yes? My sister, my mum, my brother-in-law, my niece and my nephew. I can't wait to see you guys. I love you so much. I miss you from my heart. I do. I want to see you again. When was the last time you saw them? Five and a half years ago, just before I came to Vietnam. I really miss my mum. My mum's been very, very sick with lung cancer. Mum, I love you. I'll see you, later. I'll see you in 12 hours, mum, I promise. Here you go now. Try on. I would be lost without this man, I really would, seriously. He has my heart as well, big time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my tissue? Where's my hand? I can't find it. Not there. Wait, I can't find the pocket for me. Oh, there, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got my glasses. <laughs> Thank you, book. They're you the home. Glasses. Hang on, hang on, wait, 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 you break my fucking glasses, damn it. What? Thank you. So that, this is Mr. Fork. That's his Vietnamese father, not his Western father. Okay. That's, that's my younger brother, my M Chai. M Guy. And M Guy. How did, you, Lau. how did you meet them? These were the first family I ever met in Vietnam. The first people I ever met in Vietnam. I'll tell you a quick story. When I came to Vietnam, the, the school put me in a hotel and they said, go and get something to eat. And I did, know, I did not even know how to say hello. See you again. They are, they own a ball bit tip restaurant in Long An and so they, they showed me it was beef. So that, that so that they showed me bread. Then, then he wanted to learn English, that's how I met them. And I would not even know how to say Xinjiang without these people, seriously. I love this, this is my Vietnamese family so much. They look like a good family. They're a wonderful family. And he is the best Vietnamese son I could ever think of having. He's a good boy. And a good younger brother. But but the, the younger sister is fucking crazy. She's Kung Kung Din Din. Sorry for swearing everybody. Kung Kung Din Din, see? Number one. Me, me, me. I don't need a visa. I'm sorry, I just need my passport, that's all. You need a visa before that passport is a new one. I've never, I've never had a visa in my life to go to my country. I don't need a visa, ever. Yes, but at least you should have a stamp on the passport. When you enter Vietnam, they, they get them a, a stamp on the passport. Well, it'll be in the passport somewhere. It's a, yes. in, it's in New York, you don't have anything in there. Well, it'll be my old passport. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I have never ever needed a visa for my own country before. Fucking Vietnam and it's goddamn stupid rules. You've got it there, have you? It's in there, is it? This is crazy. Fancy off asking an Australian citizen who needs a visa to enter his own country. It's just unqualified people doing a job that they're not trained to do. They're, they're qualified and moving foreigners off for their money. But well, shouldn't the uh, Australian consular embassy help you? But they didn't. They didn't. They said they couldn't, so, so that's typical. The consular should have told me about this, this problem. Once again, it's unqualified people doing a qualified person's job. They're qualified and ripping foreigners off, that's all. That's, that's me. Um, what happened with the visa situation over there? There was a problem with the passport? Uh, the passport? Uh, they asked for the Vietnamese residence card and uh, if he doesn't have it, he cannot get on the flight, but luckily we have it here. I can't believe this is finally happening. What happened? I'm going, I don't want to go now. You have to. Oh no, oh no, the other Come on. Stop breathing. I'm very dry, talking too much. Come on. So stop talking. Wait, please. I only go left. Yes, you're right. Bye, my fault, bye, my fault. Stop. Then I come back here, back home. Because Vietnam is my home, I love it so much. Why? So no, but Vietnam is Vietnam. Do you have any worries about the flight? Worries? Um, I'm just worried that I cannot take the most proper care of him because it's the first time I've done this thing. That's definitely, I'm ready when, when you guys are ready. And then you go inside, we can meet anymore. Can you go inside? Okay, well, let's go, let's go. You've got my bag, haven't you? Where's my bag? But listen, now if you go inside with her, I have to stay here, I can go with yeah, you. I know, I know that, I know. But we'll say goodbye to you, then we'll go, okay? I can't go, just you no, and no, Did you hear what I said? I said, we'll, we'll say goodbye to you, then, we'll, then we will go through. Okay, please don't, don't, just don't, don't, don't make me confused anymore. And you want to say goodbye now? We'll say goodbye now, then we'll go through security, okay? And uh, so so what's you. happening now? <laughs> Here we are, check in to go inside, cool. and then we see we have to say goodbye. Yeah, How do you feel about that? We don't need to be sad. <laughs> we will empty already. Yes. I will go home and don't see him anymore. Yes. Very empty house. Yeah. If you like the time, he got stuck, he stay in hospital. So, uh, and I go home and so, it's an empty house too. What? I look everywhere and feel him, him everywhere in the, in the house. ผู้คนกาตาแอร์เวย์ชูวิจิมเอาสเปกอัพเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเอาเ